that the best way to create jobs and opportunity, the best way to inspire innovation, inspire growth is by supporting small businesses, right? Uh, small businesses employ more than anyone else in the world. Most of the world's economic activity flows through small businesses. And it's really hard to run a small business, right? You are kind of on your own. And this is really the genesis of Main Street came, came up. It's like, we know we wanted to help, uh, you know, support these businesses, create, you know, create jobs, create opportunity for people. Welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Just sit back, relax, and learn from the leaders of today. It's a journey. Each one is different, unique, inspiring. Let's get started. This episode is powered by Jay Ventures, a community-driven VC fund in Silicon Valley in partnership with Leumitech, sponsored by Homeward Ventures, Hippo Insurance, Upwest Labs, Synergy Global, Hillel at Stanford, Leap, Birthright Excel, Serona Partners, and in media partnership with C-Tech. Welcome to another episode of 20 Minute Leaders. Welcome Doug Ludlow, CEO of Main Street, a company that helps small businesses and startups claim tax credits most accountants never claim. Before Main Street, he served as chief of staff for Google's SMB and NBU ads, was founder of Hipster, acquired by AOL in 2012, and Happy Home, acquired by Google in 2016. Doug has a Bachelor's of Arts in History and Political Science from the University of California, Los Angeles, and currently lives in San Jose with his wife, Sarah, and two children, Charlotte and William. Doug Ludlow, welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Thank you so much for joining me today. How are you? I'm great. I'm super happy to be here. Super excited. I'm really excited to have you here with me and talking about something that I know very, very little about, which is, you know, taxes and government and compliance. I do, I do need to understand it better, but but I do understand a little bit about startups and a little bit about how, you know, the, the amount of money that you're able to save for over a thousand companies you've worked with so far, how that is meaningful, especially to a young startup uh, in their early stages. And so I, I can definitely understand the pain point that you're solving, though I'm, I'm really curious how you got there. There, but we'll get there in a second. Doug, tell me a little bit about yourself. You've done some some really, really interesting things from being an innovation partner at AOL Ventures, a CEO and co-founder of the Happy Home Company, working within Google as chief of staff to SMB ads, and now as the CEO of Main Street. How do you define you know, your career trajectory looking back? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I don't know if I've had a career trajectory. I think I've been lucky to do work with great people at the com- at both startups and big companies. So like this is my third company. I had a first company's company called Hipster that was like a early Instagram competitor. I uh, you know acquired by AOL a million years ago, then worked at AOL for a while, started a new company. This was called Happy Home. It was like a personal home manager. This company was not successful, but we were, I guess as the term goes, aqua hired by Google to build the Google Home Services ad unit. And then, yeah, spent a little over three and a half years at, at Google. Is most of my time as chief of staff for all small business ads. So it's been a, uh, I think I've seen a lot of the technology industry, like from very, very, very early stage startups to, you know, I was helping run a $17 billion ads portfolio within Google, right? So it's, uh, I've kind of seen the entire spectrum. It's, uh, it, it's been a fun journey. Wow. And incredible. And you know, what what motivated you throughout the journey? What what motivated you to be a serial entrepreneur and start these companies and then stick within those larger companies and, and see the technology and, and the emerging technologies from in-house? What was sort of the the driving force for you? Yeah, I mean a couple of reasons. One, I mean, it's fun, right? If you've been an entrepreneur, you know, this is there's very little that compares to the rush of, you know putting together a team, building something new, <laughs> giving your, you know, giving your best shot. Uh, I mean, it's a, for someone like me, it's a ton of fun. For some people, other people, I'm sure it'd be a horrible, stressful, terrible experience, uh, but I love it. Uh, and and second, like, you know, I, I don't know how long I'll live on this earth, right? I don't know how much time I have in life, right? Wouldn't you rather spend your time doing something that was exciting and interesting that, you know, you thought was worthy of your time, and so that's one of the great things about startups, right? Is that I think you are spending your time pouring yourself into something that matters uh, and something that you get to create. And I can't think of a better way to spend uh, at least the, the time I devote to my career uh, doing you know, the startup world. I love it. So let, let's focus on Main Street for now and share with me how you came about to understand the pain point that you're solving today. Well, what, what experience led to this aha moment, particularly for you? Sure. So 
I've actually been working with small businesses one way or the other for about eight years. First, at my company, Happy Home, we were dealing with a lot of home service providers like plumbers and, and, and electricians. I at Google then, of course, was working with uh, you know the 15 million, not all at once, of course, but the 15 million small businesses within the Google Ads platform. And you start to understand these, these things that uh, small businesses are actually pretty sophisticated. Uh, they're they're hardworking, uh, but they just don't have time. They don't have the, the bandwidth to manage uh, really anything. And so, like, there's like a lot of people make the, when they're building for small businesses. A lot of companies make the mistake of thinking that small businesses are just like enterprise kind of shrunk down. It's entirely not true. One of the, the things that you learn over time is that small business acts much more like consumer based hmm. products, right? Because you're a you know. The, you're running a three-person company, like it's far more akin to a consumer product. So I, I spent most of our past decade working on small businesses. And, you know, with that background in mind, spent, you know, a lot of time getting to know some of my friends at Google. Uh, we decided to start a company together. And we didn't know what we really wanted to do at the time. We knew we wanted to work together. Uh, but we wanted to focus on a problem we cared about, right? And the the real impetus for, for Main Street was we saw a growing inequality, an inequality of jobs, of opportunity, of wealth, of education that was emerging, let's say, most primarily, most visibly, let's say, between an area like San Francisco and New York, and really a lot of the rest of the country, like suburban and rural communities. I grew up in a place in the middle of California Central Valley that, you know, the economy has just slowly been chipped away over the last 40 years, right? It's really hard to get a job out of high school. It's you know, really hard to run a small business. And so I saw the effect on my community of what happens when there are no good jobs, what happens when opportunity dries up? And you know, me and my co-founders, Dan Lindquist and Daniel Griffin, that we wanted to help solve this. We wanted to help you know combat this inequality. Uh, and given our backgrounds, we all worked together at the Google Small Business Team. We thought the best way to create jobs and opportunity, the best way to inspire innovation, inspire growth, is by supporting small businesses. Right? Uh, small businesses employ more than anyone else in the world. Most of the world's economic activity flows through small businesses, and it's really hard to run a small business. Right? You are kind of on your own. And this is really the genesis of Main Street came, came up. It's like, we know we wanted to help, uh, you know, support these businesses, create, you know, uh, create jobs, create opportunity for people. And we knew that, you know, these people were on their own. They needed help, especially when it came to their finances. And so starting to develop these things, like on one hand, you have people who need a lot of help, who are smart, who are trying to you know, build something. On the other hand, you have all these almost hidden pools of money and support that people can tap into. Government tax credits was the first we we moved into. Uh, we're now looking at like we we looked at enterprise discounts, right? The same type of like discounts that Google would get, for example, to buy software. We're passing on to a small guy. We're now moving to like you know actually some Web three stuff, right? How do you you know small business for the most part? Many people don't have any idea how you access high yield accounts through you know their Web three products. We want to make it easy, so you can think of this like this is like a like, uh, we call ourselves a smart bank, right? We sit on your finances, uh, we understand your business, and then we find all the areas that you can make or save money in a really easy, seamless way. So uh, I know I just gave you the, the roundabout story there, but that's that's how it started. That's what we, our goal is. So for the uh, traditional company that you're helping get, get some money in return, and, you know, first, how does it work? I mean, what, what are the different use cases that are non-trivial in which companies may be able to earn some of the money back through Main Street? Sure. Well, I'll, I'll give three different like key ways Please. people do this. One are tax credits, right? Uh, from the government, right? There's, there's uh, literally hundreds of billions of dollars worth of tax credits that go unused, uh, because people don't know they exist. So what Main Street does is after you sign up, you plug in your core business systems, we analyze what's going on uh, at your business, and then we help match you with government credits, help apply, and you either get a check from the government or you get to you know, use use a credit against your payroll tax. Like Again, it's, it's really seamless. It takes you know the thing you would have spent a ton of money on with an accountant or a ton of money trying to do it yourself and makes it a 20, 30-minute process. Another way is like again, we're we're connected to all your core business systems, including your accounting system. We know what you're spending your money on. We can help you automatically save money on your 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 expenses, your expenses, right? We know you're spending this much on Slack. We know you're spending this much on you know Airtable. We know you know uh, on your SaaS on on lawyers, etc. We can help automatically identify savings there. 
right? Again, very little work. And the savings can be hundreds of thousands of dollars for companies that are growing. And finally, again, we're connected to all your systems. So we know that most of your money as a startup or small business sits in a 0% interest checking account or you know, at Silicon Valley Bank or at Chase. We can help move some of that into some high yield accounts. And again, very little time. So it's the, the magic happens when someone joins Main Street, connects you know, their accounting systems, their HR systems. We then use our, our matching engine that we develop to you know, pull that data and intelligently suggest uh, you know, what you should do to make and save more money. It's why we call ourselves a smart bank, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, we intelligently help you, you know, know where you should put your money, what you should do with it. So are people today doing this just on their own and then hopefully if you have an accountant or if you have a CFO, then they'd be able to go in and make these, you know, uh, opp- capture these opportunities or, you know, what, what is really the pain point that, that Main Street is, is solving? Is it more of the, the observability layer or is it more of the scale layer of being able to identify, you know, uh, all the opportunities that there are? Well, step one is the discoverability problem, right? I uh, And... If you're a, if you're running a restaurant or a startup or a law firm, you're focused on your customers. You're focused on you know getting that that meal out the door, getting that product shipped, etc. You're not thinking. You don't. You don't even know to look for savings. You don't even know that these things exist, right? Uh, you know, if, this is my third company. This is the first time I've learned about tax credits. This is the first time I've learned about that I can. I don't have to spend off the shelf on software, right? I, or that I don't. I can get a better return. I. Uh, so one is just discoverability. Like when we make it very easy to let you know, hey, here's all these opportunities. Second is complexity, right? You can try to do it on your own. You can try to do tax credits. You can try to get negotiate, like you can try to negotiate savings, etc. cetera. Uh, and you can, it's not necessarily rocket science. It just takes in some cases, dozens of hours to do so. And, you know, are you going to spend the time as an entrepreneur learning how to do this yourself? Worried you might get it wrong. No, you're not. Like you're just not going to do it, right? So we handle the complexity. We take care of that for you. And finally, cost. Uh, for a lot of these services, especially like let's say an accountant or a consultant, etc., uh, they will charge you an upfront fee whether they get you a credit or money back or not. Right? Uh, us, we that's not how our, our our business works. It's we have a we're completely aligned with customers to where you only pay for getting you money back. So it's a completely risk free uh, model for for companies. Mm, interesting. And so if you're looking at the you know the greater vision of Main Street and where you're heading, you know, what where is the what is the big play here? What is the sort sure. of the gold mine that you're after? You know, whether it's a position in the market or changing some consumer behavior or changing some inequality, where what what's that vision? That's a great question. So we think that small business finance and small business like financial world has been you know, utterly broken for 20, 30 years, right? Uh, it used to be that, you know, small businesses would go to their local bank and, you know, get all the financial tools they need from their, their local bank. Uh, you know, whether it's actually they collect insurance through through their bank, they, you know, you get their loans, they get cards, they get discounts. Like it really was like Bank of America, let's say, used to be for the, the, the average business, kind of like a supermarket for financial services. Well, uh, as banks got bigger and bigger, uh, they devoted less and less time to small businesses. Uh, they still make hundreds of billions of dollars from small businesses, but it's still the small, it's actually the smallest percentage of revenue that banks make from small businesses. They make far more with commercial business, banking and big business. So they kind of forgot about small business. Well, then the great thing that happened over the last 10 years is this, this explosion in fintech to where there's now hundreds of companies that all are taking a slice of helping the small business, which is great. Like we have a lot of good friends who are running, uh, you know, interesting companies like Pipe and Capchase and Ramp and you know, Vendor and Vouch. Uh, these are great companies, uh, all connected to the financial stack of the company. Uh, the challenge is, as a small business owner, I don't have time to manage, you know, 10, 20, 30 different, you know, software products. I just don't. Uh, so we think, you know, just like there's been an unbundling of fintech, we think there's going to be a, re- a consolidation, a rebundling. To where, hey, you're a small business, you want you know one business to kind of run your entire, as we'd say in the startup world, fintech stack, as you know, McKinsey and Wells Fargo would say that you're beyond banking ecosystem, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, everything to do with your, your your finances in one location. That's where we want to be. We'd like to, we think our competitors are uh or long-term are companies like American Express and Bank of America, these giant financial companies 
that in theory help small businesses uh, with their finances, but you know, just kind of give them the the, the a really poor experience. So that that's our long term vision. And that, that's an awesome uh, vision. It's an, and I, and I love how you're you know also outlining your vision in terms of. You know, the, these are these are the players that we might be competing with today. These are the players we want to be competing with in the future, as, right. and and I think that's just very cool. If you're looking at yourself a little bit and third company that you're starting, but but spend more time in, in others as well. What are you taking with you on a, on a leadership level as a serial sure. entrepreneur that you know may not be trivial for a first timer or even a second timer? So I think. Uh, this is going to sound harsh for startup founders. I don't think you learn much as a startup founder, or it's very, very, very hard to. You learn a lot of experiences. To be true, to be fair, like you're kind of it's an experience, not like anything else. But some of these hard skills, like finance or management, uh, you don't really have time to figure out how to do those things as a startup founder. So actually, some of the best training I got. Uh, was it a big company, right? Was it whether, you know, Google primarily, uh, the the difference between my ability as a leader, because uh, I've always been, I had a product mind, I've always wanted to you know, ship new products, uh, but watching people learn how to scale, watching people learn how to manage properly, right? That was something that is, uh, I think, completely up my game at Main Street from my, my previous companies. Mm. Uh, so I would actually advise... So if you want to start a company, like go work for that, you know, startup, work for that YC company, go try to get into YC, but then don't spend your entire early career working there. Go work at Google, go work at Facebook, learn how the big companies do it. Like, you know, don't work for a big, giant, old, slow company. Work for like, I mean, Facebook and Google and Amazon, like these guys are competitive. Like they're, they're, they're at the top of the game. So go work for them. And then you'll have uh, kind of, the best of both worlds. I think that's what I've been able to pick up at Main Street, like the the young, scrappy, hungry company, along with the, you know, here, you, you actually want to grow to a scaled giant company. It's and and doing thing. it with the best practices of a, of a company like exactly. Google, but with the scrappiness and with the young mentality of, of a young company. So I think that what, what you're outlining here is this beautiful and delicate balance between the two things, right? Exactly. I love it. Going back to you again, and you know, looking back before, before you're an entrepreneur and before you're in the tech scene at all, as a kid, what are you curious about? What are, what are the things that you're observing that are, you know, making you really excited and curious about the world? Sure. I, well, for one, I've always been kind of an entrepreneur. Like I, I had a little uh, lawn mowing service in my neighborhood. We yeah. made candy and sold it. it. Was a paper boy. I. So I've always wow. been interested in that. I think, which, which you know, says something about me. I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> I, I do. I'm actually deeply interested in. I've been in politics and public service, like understanding, like how do you make again growing up in a place like Modesto, which was, you know, like a really great place to live in the 50s and 60s, and then the economy started hitting, and you'd watch like gangs on the street and drug deals, and like not, you know, it became the car theft capital of the world. Right, growing up in that environment, watching it go from one thing, like I started caring a lot about, you know, just politics in the world. And I actually don't think in the tech world we pay enough attention to the power of politics, right? The power of government, right? It's this massive force. It's this massive thing that we're able that it controls much of what we do. And uh, you know, I, I think we we we're probably way too disengaged as a tech community in the political world, given just how much influence this has in the world. So that's a you know, I mean, and that's in addition to all like the normal video game and science stuff that you do as a kid in sports, right? Uh, I was a normal kid, not just worrying about you know, <laughs> politics and you know startups from an early age. Uh, no, no, I love it, and and I have to ask about you and your co-founders with Dan and and Daniel and. It's Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk Chili Cookoff. Ah, what yeah, is that, right. and how do you? What is that? So, I, for those who don't know Santa Cruz, you know, Santa Cruz is a beach town not too far from San Jose, Palo Alto. And they have this boardwalk that's like this, you know, 120 year old uh, amusement park. And, you know, every year they do one giant chili cook off and one giant clam chowder cook off. And, you know, dozens or hundreds of teams come by and you cook clam chowder or chili and the general public gets it and it's judged. And it's a gi- giant, like, it's a charitable event. Uh, 
but yeah, we my 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 friends and I we we've been doing the clam chowder cook off for eight years and the chili cook off for like five. And Dan, Daniel, and I for a couple of years in a row like won the chili cook off. Wow, uh, cooking 60, 60 gallons of chili on the beach, which is uh, which is a lot. So no, it, it was a, talk about gallons. a great team bonding experience for us. So you're literally standing there along with dozens of other teams, all of you cooking chili, and then the public comes, tries it, and they, and then the judges declare a winner. That's exactly right. I can just picture in my mind, and I want, I want to come and, and visit the chili cook-off next year. So, so I'm going to make sure to, to look <laughs> to make a note to look that up right afterwards. Uh, Doug, I really want to thank you. I think the, the work that you're doing, obviously, with Main Street and, and the motivation leading up to Main Street, I think is is, is extremely you know remarkable and very very inspiring for me as a young entrepreneur. Um, the intentionality with which you started Main Street with the previous understanding and experience from the two companies you've you've founded, but then also the two larger companies that you've also worked at and sort of bringing the scrappiness and the best practices and obviously making a huge impact already on, on more than a thousand companies. I think that's just really, really cool. And I'm sure that every time that the, those companies are saying that, you know, the returns that they got from working with you, that it's that, that aha moment that sort of knocks on the head. I think that's just, I, I can only imagine how cool that is. So thank you very, very much. And uh, stay safe and stay healthy. Hey, you too. Thanks for having me. Thank you. 